So we're here today in Kernersville, North Carolina at the Fidelitorium studio. The studio was built in 1994 by Mitch Easter. Uh, Mitch has been making records since the early 80s. He's worked with bands like R.E.M., Pavement, Suzanne Vega, Birds of Avalon. We're gonna be talking to him a little bit about recording and kind of get a sense for sort of the philosophy behind recording. What is it like when you have a new band that comes in who maybe knows your work and they're saying to themselves, well, Mitch Easter did this record. Am I going to get that record? You know, is that an expectation you have to kind of work against, or is that um, work to your advantage in some way? Or it's a double-edged sword. You know, in my case, I really discovered that because uh, you know you you do a record that people like, and then people want to work with you. But then uh, everybody wants to distinguish themselves when they're making a record, and then right. you know people are finding themselves. You know, so they they don't want to get swallowed up in some other identity either. So you right. can tell sometimes an ambivalence. You can't turn somebody into somebody else. For the most part, you're going to sound like yourself, you know. So really, I just thought it was like funny when people were like, no, no, we don't want that to sound like. And it's like, well, you don't sound like them. You know? <laughs> I mean, I, I know what they mean, but right. it, but really what comes across when you hear a record is is the, the humans, you know. Sure. The, the reverb settings and stuff are completely different according to who's going through them, you know. Right. But yes, people do sometimes think that you can sort of put this stamp on everything that makes it the same. But I certainly never tried to do that. Is it important then, kind of going off that, for a band that's coming into a studio to really do their research and figure out whether this person you may be suited to their making their kind of music, or does it, or you know, are most producers, engineers going to be adaptable in that situation? I would think that you should be adaptable, but I know there are people, especially as time went on, that sort of you know distinguished themselves with a sound and that right. worked for them commercially, and that was kind of their thing. But it was. That wasn't very interesting to me. You know? right. I, I sort of like to start from scratch every time, really. So you got to start somewhere when you figure out who you're going to work with. So obviously, if somebody's done a bunch of records you like, they're bound to have something in common with you, and it's bound to be a good starting point. What is kind of the difference between a producer and an engineer? I think a lot of people are maybe confused as to what that difference actually is. A lot of people who are producers were engineers who got a bigger and bigger role with the band because the bands liked them, or they liked their ideas or whatever. You sure. know? And I think it's just always been kind of incredibly loose. And then some of the top producers to this day are people who are never even at the session. But somehow when they show up, they say the magic thing that puts the band on the right course right. and everybody's happy, you know? So it's right. like, that's kind of cool and kind of a scam all at once and very <laughs> weird, you know? I think the producer basically contributes somehow. Mm -hmm. They either offer a direction or they, you know, they help sort out problems or details or whatever, you right. know? If you are strictly turning knobs and you're an engineer, you're not a producer. Right. You know? That's kind of what I think. So when a band is looking for a studio uh, or an engineer, are there any kind of red flags people should be looking for or things that they should avoid? It's hard to say, but I think if something about the place or the person who runs it creeps you out, you should not go there. <laughs> not every combination of people is a good one, you know? So, right. I mean, you've got, if you're going to be working with that person, you got to kind of think they're sort of maybe okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs>